This is an excerpt of Curse of the Soul Collector by Kara Blaine. Lorenzo had been back home for only a few days before his mother insisted on throwing a ball. To celebrate your safe return, dear, perhaps you will find a lady to your liking. The hint was clear. He had not rescued a princess and returned with her, so the search for a wife was renewed. Besides, you haven't quite been yourself since you came back. This event is sure to cheer you. She was right. He hadn't been himself. He had tried to hide it, but it wasn't possible. He missed Alma terribly and worried about her day and night. He couldn't shake the feeling that she wasn't safe, although he tried to tell himself what she had told him. She had survived in those woods on her own for ten years. But she had sent him away. He had begged her to come with him, and she wouldn't. He could not make that choice for her as much as he wanted to. He had to abide by her wishes. The day before the ball, he asked Matteo to ride with him. Marta had returned relatively unharmed and was fully recovered now. They left mid-morning for a jaunt in the countryside. So, this ball's tomorrow. the ball tomorrow is another find-the-prince-a-wife effort, isn't it? Yes, of course. What else? Too bad you didn't manage to get the princess in the tower first. I don't want a princess in a tower. I don't want a princess at all. He urged Marta into a gallop to ease his pent-up emotions. When he slowed and Matteo caught up with him, they rode in silence for several minutes. Finally, Matteo said, This is about the witch, isn't it? What was her name? Alma? Lorenzo pressed his lips together, but finally conceded. Yes, I thought so. You haven't been the same since you came back. It's because of her. Lorenzo nodded. Do you think she bewitched you? Lorenzo reined to a halt and stared. What? You know, love potions or the like. Maybe she spelled you. You really haven't been yourself. I... no. Alma? Oh, what are you talking about? Mateo tisked. You said yourself that she's a witch. You're obviously stuck on her, even though you knew her less than a month. Did it not even occur to you? No, she wouldn't. I, I do care for her, because she's intelligent and real and honest. Vulnerable, beautiful, strong. Not because she bewitched me. Mateo sighed. How can you be sure? He had no answer for this question. Had she had the opportunity? Certainly. She had given him medications and prepared his food countless times. But she wouldn't have tricked him like that, would she? To what end? He hated that he was even wondering. He turned without answering and rode back to the castle without another word. Matteo, his closest friend, had planted a seed of doubt about the woman he might love. He understood why his friend had done it, but also would not forgive him for it any time soon. The evening of the ball arrived. When he entered the ballroom with his parents, his mother whispered to him, Try, Lorenzo. Give them a chance, please. He nodded and gave her what he hoped was a reassuring smile. If you do not choose... Your father will. His, fa his smile fell, but he again nodded his understanding. The king would wait no longer. He danced with many young ladies that night, many he had met before and several he had not, visitors from other places or daughters of nobles only now old enough to be presented at court. At the end of the night, his parents took him aside. Well, his father said, who is the lucky lady? Father, must I really? Yes, or I will. Was it not made clear? His father's gaze was like iron. Lorenzo sighed. I am not proposing to her yet, but please have the steward invite the eldest daughter of the Duke of Torno to dine with us tomorrow. His father nodded. I accept that compromise. The following morning, Lorenzo sent a messenger to Alma. 
He could not shake his unease. He advised the messenger to leave his horse at a village or farm near the forest, but to return as soon as possible. He sent a few books he thought Alma would like as an excuse. He said it was a gift of thanks for helping her, or for her help. He supped with the court that night, and the daughter of the Duke of Torno joined the royal dining table. Her name was Amelia. She was a nice enough young lady, and seemed a bit more grounded than many of the other contenders. He invited her for a riding party with a, to a riding party with a group of nobles the following day. He called on her in the home of the duke. Ah, uh, sorry. He called on her in the home the duke had rented in the city the day after that, where they were staying because his estate was so far away. He saw her almost every day for the next two weeks, trying to work himself up to a proposal he still had no desire for. Then the messenger returned, with the books, and a cat. Lorenzo happened to be at the stables with the me when the messenger arrived. When the man pulled the cat from an open saddlebag, Lorenzo knew something was very wrong. "'Where did you get that cat?' he asked, storming over to the man who was still trying to dismount. The man dropped from the horse and bowed. He looked somewhat ridiculous as he was still holding Cody under one arm. "'Good afternoon, sire. I—, I "'Where did you get that cat?' the man blanched. The cat in question squirmed out of the man's grasp and ran to Lorenzo, twisting around his ankles and meowing pathetically. Lorenzo picked up Cody and held him close. "'By the cottage you sent me to, sire. No one was there except the cat, and it followed me for miles, so I, I finally let it ride with me. Didn't think he was likely to survive out there all alone.' He's a nice one. Poor cat. What do you mean, no one was there? She wasn't home? No, sire. The chimney was smokeless. No lights were lit. The door wasn't locked, so I opened it to make sure. Didn't look like anyone had been there in days, or maybe weeks. Did you search the property, the forest? I walked the property, sire. Only found the cat. What about the goats and chickens? The man shrugged helplessly. Just the cat? I'm sorry, sire. I wasn't sure if she was coming back, so I didn't leave the books. He shoved Cody back into the man's arms. See him fed and taken care of. His name is Cody. Keep him safe until I return. Yes, sire. The man's eyes were wide. Cody. Of course. Mateo! Lorenzo bellowed. Ready my horse and your own. We leave in an hour. He wouldn't, he wouldn't make the mistake of going alone again, but he wasn't waiting to gather, uh, a, sorry, he wasn't waiting to gather a retinue either. Mateo came out of a stall. Leave? Where? Do it now. We will be gone for at least two weeks, but likely much longer. Pack accordingly. I need to see, I need to speak with my parents. The king and queen were not pleased. "'You cannot leave now. You're just getting to know Amelia,' his mother fretted. "'I must go. I'm sorry. I will return as soon as I can. I'm not going alone. Matteo will be with me.' His father shook his head. Mm, "'I cannot allow this. You had your adventure. It's time for your duty.' "'I am going, father. Will you lock me in the dungeon?' Perhaps I should, the king replied, obviously near the end of his rope. Nothing else has gotten through to you. This woman saved my life. She's in trouble, I know it. I will find her. My honor allows no other path. He said nothing of his heart. That was his own business. You will defy your king. His father's voice was dangerously calm now. Father, if I have to. I will abdicate my throne. Do you understand? You would have no heir. I'm going, and no one will stop me. He walked away, calling back over his shoulder. Mateo will come with me, so find someone else to manage the stables. He was on Marta thirty minutes later, Mateo riding next to him as they galloped toward Valencia. 